Welcome back and welcome to the Get Your Kitchen Approved workshop. This is the second video in the workshop series and whether you have always been interested in becoming your own boss but just didn't know where to start or maybe you've lost the passion for your nine to five and you need a change, then this is the place to be, the place to build a freedom-based business, baking delicious, nourishing food from your very own kitchen. I'm Helen Marshall, but you can call me H. I'm the founder and owner of Primal Alternative. And since 2016, I've helped close to 300 people have their own home-based baking business in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and the USA. In this workshop, I'll be teaching you what you need to do to register your domestic kitchen as a food business. Now, thanks so much for checking out video one. The response has been incredible. And if you missed the first video in this series, then go check it out because I covered how you can determine your unique golden spot. And I showed you how to combine your natural skills and interests with the biggest industries and what that could mean for your success in a home-based business. When you align your values with what you love and you serve people in a meaningful way, that is when you'll never work another day in your life and can create a lifestyle that you truly love. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it right now. There's a link to it somewhere around here and then come back for this second video. Now, in this video, I'm going to take you deeper into getting your kitchen approved. And I'm gonna show you how the Primal Alternative Food Safety Program can help you get your kitchen approved by your council without having to rehome your pets or turn your house into a factory. Woohoo! So we're gonna be covering a lot of ground today. So be sure to download the council checklist PDF on this page so you can follow along and take some notes. Now, there's a reason that you're watching this video. It's either that you'd love to start a side hustle, doing something you enjoy, but you're unsure, unsure about the compliance and you're sure that your council is the worst council and your kitchen won't pass. And you know what? There's never been a better time to start a home-based business making honest, nourishing food because many Aussies have lost faith in the big supermarket brands. In fact, According to a recent survey by market research experts Play MR, 59% of people believe that natural products meet their dietary requirements much better than regular supermarket foods. And on top of that, 45% said the range of natural food options in the supermarket is insufficient. So there is definitely space for you to enter the market. And secondly, Job satisfaction. Baking healthy food is amazing. What do I mean? Well, what I mean is it feels fantastic to help people improve their health and wellness through food. And at the end of the day, you can lie your head down on the pillow knowing what you do benefits those people in your community. Plus, it's so much easier to sell something you actually believe in. If you've got a love for clean eating and healthy living, then baking yummy, nutritious food is the way to go. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to approach cancel and get your home kitchen approved. To get started, let's look at what a food business registration is and why you need one. Now, all food businesses need to comply with the Food Act 2008 and the Food Standards Code. Oh, it all sounds so scary. And why is that? It's to make sure that food that's for sale in your locally local governing area is safe and suitable for human consumption. So environmental health officers play an educational role providing guidance and resources to food businesses. So that's good to know that you don't have to have everything absolutely 100% perfect, um, that they are going to help you and guide you through this process as well to get you approved. There are penalties for food businesses that operate without a registration. So the key takeaway here is that if you want to be a legit food business, you need 
a food business, you need to register as a food business with the local council. So it's a three-step process. The first step is to get approval from the planning department. And that's usually to make sure that you can have a home-based business and that you're not going to be a traffic problem or a noise problem, which you won't be with this business model. Then it goes on to the health department to approve the products that you're uh, wanting to bake from home to make sure that they are low risk and not potentially hazardous, that you're going to package them properly, label them properly, and that you have a good understanding of food safety and handling. Once you've got through those two steps, the next step, which seals the deal, is the inspection. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, someone from the council wants to come around and look at your kitchen don't worry, prime ministers have stayed up all night cleaning their kitchen and absolutely being certain that they're never going to pass. And then they do pass and we celebrate hugely. The next step is you get your certificate of your food business registration and we celebrate you as open for business. Now, what are council looking for? Council want to make sure that you have got sealed benches and floors that your kitchen is in a good order, that you can store ingredients separate from your main household ingredients. Now, if you're short on space, you can use those plastic stackable boxes from Bunnings and just wheel out your ingredients on bake day. That's what I used to do. Council need to see that you can keep pets and kids out of your production zone, aka your kitchen, during your baking. And they want to make sure that you don't have any evidence of pests like cockroaches and rats. What you don't need to do is to turn your domestic kitchen into a commercial kitchen with steel bench tops, find new homes for your pets or turn your house into a factory. And you definitely do not need a kitchen renovation. I see so many people that tell me they need a new oven, they need a Thermomix, they need a a complete new home before they can start a business. Don't fall into that trap. Start with what you have and where you're at. It's completely good enough. Some things to consider for cancel. Are you renting? If you're renting, you might want to get approval from your landlord uh, to make sure it's okay to have a home-based food business. The key things that landlords are looking to hear are that you're not going to put any extra wear on wear and tear on their property. It's not going to be a traffic issue. You're not going to have loads of customers turning up at your house. And also they're not going to need to take out any extra insurance for your micro business that you'll be having from home. It's also important to know that cancel is a necessary process and that with the correct application, attitude and, pro and approach, you will get there. It's common to get an initial no, but 78% of Prime Ministers said getting approval was a fairly straightforward process. Now, get taking that structured approach and going about it the right way versus just ringing up your environmental health officer is a much more um, better way to go about it. And a lot of the battle has been taken out of developing a brand and food safety program such as the Food Standards Australia New Zealand compliant labels. Um, as you can see here, we've got the nutrition information panels, the ingredients with the allergens stated, percentages of ingredients in there, uh, the Made in Australia logo, um, the, the weight, the name of the product and the description of uh, what it is and who it's suitable for. With information to add your address, uh, it's very important that um, your address is on the label so that if there's any food recall issues, they can get straight back to the manufacturer. We've only ever ha had it happen a couple of times. Don't worry about it too much. We've also got the storage instructions on there as well. Now, labels seem to be one of those things that it doesn't seem like a big deal, but they're are really big fines and penalties for inaccurate, false or misleading labels. Food must be packaged and labeled correctly. So it's good to know that the primal alternative products have compostable cellophane packaging. They have accurate labels. It's all done for you. All of those like headachey, wake up in the middle of the night, stressing about things, that's all taken care of. 
And we also carry authentic GS1 barcodes. Now, the barcodes alone cost $800 a year to use. Uh, and that's one of the many benefits you get when you become a Prima Lista. So the Prima Lista resources for your compliance as a legit food uh, operator include our food safety program, the EHO letter template that you can just cut and paste to send in with your application, an EHO checklist, which is really more for troubleshooting any curly questions you might get from council. So my recommendation for you is to check your council website. And what you want to be looking for on there is just type in your local council and um, food business registration and see what comes up for you. A little bit about our food safety program. So this is a document that identifies and controls food safety hazards in the handling of food in a food business. So this epic document, it's 110 pages long with lab tests. So we've had all of the products lab tested so we can evidence that they are low risk and not potentially hazardous. Again, a hugely expensive task wouldn't be viable for one micro baker to do, but as a, as a collective, we can put these sorts of incredible resources together. So I've developed this program uh, over the last six years with external food safety consultancies, labs, and the health department. That's right. Several environmental health officers and environmental health team leaders have been involved in uh, verifying and uh, checking basically our food safety program. So the purpose of it is to help Primer Listers obtain and maintain their food business registration so that they can meet the requirements of the relevant State Food Act and legislation, including the Australia New Zealand Food Safety Standards, and to ensure food safety, quality and consistency across the brand. Now, this epic document is available to all Prima Listers with the Prima Lista license, and it's a document that applies a proactive approach to food safety across the business, and it's based on the Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, or HACCP, system that's recommended by the standard. Huge, right? Scary stuff. But don't be daunted because this is another one of the essentials that's been taken care of for you with this proven model. So as I mentioned before, do your own research. Have a look on your council website under food-based uh, food business registration and see what comes up. What you want to be looking for is that council will approve low risk, not potentially hazardous food products such as cakes without cream, jams, that kind of thing. That's the category that our products fit into. Now, this is also a really good time to shine a light on your doubts and fears. When we start to think about authorities and getting compliance and being fined, if we do something wrong, it can bring up a lot of stuff. So this is a really good opportunity to write a list of what's coming up for you and a list of all the things that could potentially go wrong. Can you live with that? And what can you do once you've shone a light on there <clears throat> to help mitigate that risk so it doesn't happen? You don't have to deal with it in real life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Primal Alternative is a streamlined range with a grain-free niche. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, it's absolutely essential to have a streamlined range so that you don't try and be all the things to all the people and uh, end up in a burnt out heap. We've all been there before. Don't want to go there again. So in our range, we have got three different types of cookies. We have got various different loaves and our loaves are either as ready-made. They also come in a packet mix. So our customers can have a baking experience at home. And also we sell our ingredients on as a whole food option as well. Granolas, and believe it or not, all of our products have similar ingredients with simple, easy to follow recipes. You just measure, mix and bake. And when I first started, I wanted to do everything for everyone. But you can only make low risk, not potentially hazardous food from a home kitchen. 
which at the time it was a nightmare, but it was the best blessing in disguise because we could get known for nailing several low risk products and not being burnt out. Now, this is key. We have pizzas, we have wraps, and in our range, we have the grain free niche, but we, in, underneath that niche, we also have low carb, plant based, and whatever kind of protocol you're on, there's always something that you can find in the range that's delicious for you to enjoy. Uh, we have in our packet mix range, pancakes, which are a weekly staple in our house and brownies, which we collaborate with Alex Stewart from Low Tox Life on. And pastry in collaboration with the wonderful Joe Witten from Quirky Cooking. Now, as you can imagine, collaborating with big industry leaders like Joe and Alex has been instrumental in the building of the Primal Alternative brand, making Primal Alternative a well-loved, known and trusted brand. Phew, okay, we've covered a huge amount of ground in this video. So take a deep breath. You don't need to know it all now and you don't need to do it all now. But this video was about registering as a food business and how it's possible. I wanted to show you how it is possible for you to run a baking business from your own kitchen with our three-step approach, food safety program, application, cut and paste covering letter and a ton of support from myself and the other primalisters who've already got their food business registrations. We're all here for you. Now, a lot of people have been asking about how to get customers, how to make sales, and how it would be so nice to create a new stream of income, but wondering, how much do I have to bake to earn that amount of money? So that's why in the next video that I've got for you, it's going to be the Making Sales Workshop. And I think you're going to really love this one. In fact, I think it might be your favorite in this series because I'm going to walk you through how you can ethically make sales and still be you and have an amazingly successful home-based business. And you're also going to do um, be able to download the Ideal Customers Brainstorm PDF, which is going to be really cool. And I think you're going to love it. So watch out for that uh, in the next video. Now, I want to hear from you. What action are you going to take to get started? Let me know in the comments or reply to me uh, via email. And if you found value in this video and you have got like-minded friends who you think would love to hear about this opportunity as well, I would love for you to share this with at least three amazing people um, because it's so much easier to get started on this journey when you've got other people on the path with you. But right now, download the Get Your Kitchen Approved PDF and do your own research and let me know how you go. And I'll see you in the next video.